Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm gonna record this video on a whim. I was going through some of the comments on a recent video I posted about being able to hear with precision and a phonetic transcription system that I created to help people really tune in and tap into the actual acoustic reality of speech instead of relying on like a normal word system. And I got a good feedback on that, but also a couple of questions. So I wanna take a moment to kind of clarify some more pieces of my content here or my methodology here. And what I wanna kind of just go into is just show you quickly in my curriculum, which I'm gonna be changing and overhauling soon, so don't get too married to this version of it. But in the first week of the program as it is now, you first just kind of become aware of all the parts of your communication instrument. So you're aware of how the tongue moves up and down. You do all these different kind of drills where you use a camera and a, or a mirror to see your tongue moving and become kinesthetically and aware of where your tongue is in space. And then you merge that with a visual understanding. So here you can kind of see an MRI scan of the profile. And if you're saying E and then I'm explaining to you what your tongue is doing, then what happens is that what used to be purely unconscious and just not clear at all, now becomes conscious in a way that is both kinesthetic, which means the sensation of muscle contraction, uh, tactile, which is the sensation of things touching. So I have a section here called touch, where um, you learn to discern these different touch points on your tongue and different touch points here on the roof of your mouth. So I can say to you that like the German sound is made by taking point four of the tongue and moving it to point E, right? But first you need to know what point four is and point E. So this page, you go through a process where all these things become new categories in your mind. Oh yeah, point number one, point number three. Right now in your mind is all blur. But you do the process, you can discern those different points. And then the, the, the point I wanted to get to here is that a lot of people have issues when it comes to learning the international phonetic alphabet. And that's because a lot of people in general have issues working with script systems, symbolic representation systems. A lot of people have uh, what they call dyslexia, for example, where that whole system is is um, not doesn't function the same way it does with other people. And I wanna make it super crystal clear. I have a system for translating the reality of acoustic speech to a symbolic visual script form that is better than using IPA conventions and definitely better than using whatever the standard writing system is for the target language. So I created a system for that, but you do not need to have a written system. Human beings have been speaking without any writing basically forever. It's really only recently in modern times that the majority of people were illiterate and large swaths of the world population are still illiterate. So I wanna make that clear. It's a big part of my philosophy and understanding of the world at large is that people do not appreciate just how much literacy has transformed our mind and became like this baseline of our consciousness in our society. And therefore people don't question it. They don't think about what it's actually doing. Oh yeah, writing is this, you know, it's a massive technology that we've installed in our brains and it's completely transformed us. And I think a lot of things were lost in that process. So I'm kind of like a anti-literacy person. Despite being hyper-literate myself, I can read, I even want like spelling bees as a kid, but like there's something that's lost when you, and what's lost basically is this, when I'm looking at a symbol, right? If I'm looking at this thing here and I'm looking at this symbol, it activates the system in my mind and all these cognitive processes which distract me from anything else I could be paying attention to, such as the sound of things or the feeling of things in my mouth. So I want people more than to learn IPA, what we focus on in my program is teaching you how to feel your body, how to feel your body when you're communicating with people, because the more you can feel your body, the more you can feel other people's body when they're speaking. And the root 
of our capacity to communicate as humans is basically our ability to feel other people's feelings in their bodies through something called mirror neurons, which I won't go into here. But that's the kind of basic fundamental thing here. So you can learn vowels and consonants not using any symbols, but then categorizing it in your brain by an understanding of what's anatomically occurring in your mouth. And that's how we do it. So actually here in mirrors, I talk about um, mirror neurons. I show this video here, like, watch this. So there's a newborn baby. He watches his father pull faces and then slowly responds. This isn't conscious mimicry. Xavier doesn't even know he has a face. So this baby can barely even see anything, whatever. It's such a deep system that we're dealing with, our ability to perceive body movements and others. So that's mirrors. That's why I kind of start this section off with a bunch of videos that explain this concept of mirror neurons. And then we go into the audit. And here I lay out, in whatever your language is, all of the vowels, which I've categorized in a way that makes it easier for people to make sense of. And then you go through the vowels, right? And then you, you hear each one, um, you know, it's Portuguese. Me. And you mimic after it. And then, so you have all these vowels. But notice here, I don't have any letters. There's no symbols here. You're just going through and then you're just seeing the Lego pieces laid out in front of you without giving them a name to distract you. You just have to feel the sound. Then, after we do the audit, and if you're working with the coaching system, then we can identify which ones you're missing. Then we go into the vowels, right? So I want to go into these Spanish vowels. I start to explain them, but notice I don't give them a letter yet. I say still vowel number one, and then I give you an MRI scan, and then I give you a bunch of words. Do you hear it? Hija. Idea. Right? And then what's happening is you're now starting to get a feeling and understanding and a category in your mind but that category is based off of the physiological sensations in your body uh, you're integrating that with a visual picture of what the tongue is actually doing in the mouth and and then you're just experimenting and testing it out so you can start to categorize and organize all these different vowel and consonant sounds and then when you're talking to someone and you want to refer to that sound i can be like Hey, give me the, give me the E, give me the, give me the S, right? I don't have to say the letter S or the CH or anything. I just make the sound and you know what I'm talking about because I'm doing the sound. So this is where you start in our program. And the benefit of this is that if you're someone who is not comfortable with symbols, so you see here I have vowels and then consonants. Then at the end, I have a thing where I kind of talk about symbols the relevance and the risk of symbols. So you really understand what's going on here. And then we go back through all the symbols, again, organized so the weird symbols are mapped out for you. So you can learn them here, and then later on in the program you can do transcription. But the overarching point I wanted to make in this video is that you first are able to feel and perceive and hear and understand and make sense of all of these vowels and consonants before you see any letter written down. And that's intentional because what happens is that if I give you the letter early, then all of a sudden it activates all the technology in people's brains and they stop paying attention to the sound. They stop paying attention to the sensations in their mouth and therefore they don't truly learn. So that's why I delay the symbol and it's not required. So if someone's just kind of like, uh, my brain's getting scrambled by these symbols, I'm like, fine, skip them. It's not a big deal. And even later on when we do the transcription thing, there's even a way to do it without using symbols. All the symbols are there for in transcription is just um, to get it out of your head so you can keep track of it easier. That's all it's there for, but it's not necessary. So I just wanted to make that clear because um, it's a big passion of mine. Maybe in another video I can talk about why it's a big passion of mine. It has to do with my, with my Nigerian heritage and being connected to, um, you know, my parent, my mom, who's Nigerian, and my grandfather were both literate, but my mom's mom was not literate. My mom's father was like the first 
person to like read in his like area and was a very important person because of that. Um, so I understand the power of literacy, but at the same time, I have a deep connection to a culture which only started becoming literate very recently. And there's all of these things in the way Nigerians and West Africans in general communicate and relate that's way more embodied and way more charismatic that is just completely lost across several generations in a European and Western world, um, which is the other half of me. And people don't know what they've lost. And I can see a direct correlation between how literacy, and there's, there's lots of books on the subject too that I read, how literacy kind of robbed people of this kind of enlivened way of communicating. So I'm bringing that back into my language program. So I, when you learn a language with the mimic method, you're not just learning a language, you're learning, you're learning how to be more embodied in your communication in general. And I think it's super important, especially as the next wave of technology, first with literacy, um, now it's these things that are taking us even deeper out of our bodies and into a matrix where we're no longer truly with our human communicative selves. So anyways, I won't go off on a tangent there, but I just wanted to kind of make that point. And also, I just moved into a new apartment that I got, I'll be here for at least a year, which means I'll be stable. I'm usually traveling and therefore I don't have the stability to make videos. But now that I'm here, I plan to be making more videos, looking at your guys' comments. That gives me ideas for more videos to make, like this one right now. So if you enjoyed this and you wanna hear more, you have more things to ask me about, like, comment, subscribe, share this to your friends. And uh, yeah, let's keep the conversation going, my friends. And now I awkwardly figure out how to close this. I also at some point will figure out how to make better quality production. But why aren't you doing it? Let's do this. Ah, there you go. Bye.